Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In most of my videos with the Tone Master Pro, I've discussed it from a guitarist perspective and shown you how to build tones. Today, I want to take you into the other life that I live as a music producer and show you how the Tone Master Pro is really the centerpiece of my workflow. Stay tuned. All right, well, welcome back to the channel. I really do appreciate all the love and the support on all the videos, and I, I, so many of you guys have reached out to me, and I, I'm just really grateful. Thank you guys so much. I wanna talk about a couple of different workflow things, and um, depending on how I edit this video, I'm hoping for it to be kind of like my workflow with the Tone Master Pro. I just enjoy, you know, really how useful this, this thing is. I use it in so many different ways outside of just a guitar amp simulator. Biggest thing that I do is I use it as an interface. From doing these videos to doing my live streams, it is the corner piece of my entire workflow. All the audio that you're hearing right now, this is coming straight out of the Tone Master Pro into a secondary interface into directly into my iPhone. So there's no into a doll or nothing else. Like I'm almost dollless with everything that I do now. So let me give you a couple of ideas and then I, I'm gonna show you some of the gear that I use and how I have it wired up. So idea number one is obviously as a guitar amp, duh. Idea number two is bass amp, duh. But here's something you may not have considered if you were doing any type of writing and recording as a producer is that when I track, and I'll show you my Ableton session here in a second. Anytime I'm recording guitar, I record two tracks at the same time. So input one is whatever you hear through the Tone Master Pro. Input three is the dry signal. So there's this concept called reamping, which is basically if you have the dry signal, you can do any type of post-processing that you want. So I use the Tone Master Pro interchangeably with neural DSP plugins. You know, my the most used plugins I use are uh, Archetype Rebia, because man, that synthesizer, so good. And then I also use Archetype Abasi a lot. And uh, I'll show you it. I'll show you it on a track that I did at the end, just so you can get an idea. The other thing is uh, I got a new piece of gear that I'm, I'm really stoked about. I got the, the Roland SP404. The Roland 404 is also acting as a, a secondary interface. And there's a couple of different ways that I can use this device. So one way for you keyboard players out there, I feel like tone, the Fender team doesn't market this device for you, but if you're a keys player and you want your own portable amp, the Tone Master Pro is a great buy. So what I do is say I'm working on a virtual instrument. I own several VSTs for a piano and keys. So say if I'm using Universal Audio's Rhodes piano and I just want their piano, but I want to reamp it using my own effects or just use it as a, as a keyboard, throw some crazy effects on like a Leslie or a chorus or a flanger, any effect pedal that's inside of the Tone Master Pro, you can use the virtual instruments. Now this does require some gear. I'm not gonna say that the only piece of a equipment you need is the Tone Master Pro, but if you're a music producer, that means you're probably a gear snob and you probably have a ton of gear. Or if you're a new producer, you're going to have all this gear over time. Trust me. It's it's a it's a never ending expense buying more gear. So I use the Roland SP404 as a secondary interface, along with a lot of other things. That It's a whole other video to talk about this thing. We won't dive deep into it, but I basically use the effect send and return into the Tone Master Pro. The way that I currently have this wired up is my synthesizer is being controlled. Well, there's some craziness going on in my setup right now. I have an analog sequencer. This is the uh, Artraria Beat Step Pro, and that is talking to the Roland SP404 via MIDI. And I can have it say, like, uh, if I have my own samples pulled up, I can program it all and control it with the sequencer. Now, I also have the SP404 connected to my Roland Korg analog synthesizer via MIDI. So I can really control everything with the, the Beat Step Pro. I'll do some more videos showing you this, but all of that audio is now being routed into my Tone Master Pro, and I can record that directly into any DAW or digital audio workstation. Technically, I'm part of the DAW list movement now. I didn't realize I was gonna be going down this path, but I am literally, I can do my show without a, a computer now, thanks to the Roland SP404 and the Tone Master Pro. So the way that that's connected is through on the back of the, on the bottom side of the Roland SP404, it has an auxiliary out for headphones. So I just bought a 10 foot cable, auxiliary cable, because remember when those were actually relevant? <laughs> but I routed that out and then threw the aux in on the Tone Master Pro. And if you go to the mixer, you can actually record the auxiliary through um, channels one and channels two inside of your DAW. 
So that's kind of a cool workaround. You just got to get the levels right from the Roland SP404 or whatever you're using into the Tone Master Pro. Let me switch over to my DAW real quick and I will show you some things. First thing we need to do is we need to get both systems talking. So in Ableton and in Logic Pro, if you press command comma, it's gonna pull up your preferences. Input device, we want it to be the Tone Master Pro. Output device is Tone Master Pro. Now, when we're looking at latency, uh, I'm gonna move up to 256 samples. Now, this is this is really gonna depend on, on your computer, but basically what we need to shoot for is getting our latency underneath uh, really four milliseconds. I think five milliseconds and below is fine. So you may need to do some type of uh, driver error compensation with my current MacBook Pro. This is my setups. So feel free to pause this. If you have a MacBook Pro with an M1 chip, 16 gigabytes of RAM, these are the settings that I use. With that, now all audio is routed through the Tone Master Pro. I also do this, if you press command spacebar and type in sound, all of my sound is also being routed through my Tone Master Pro. And you see, this is also the SP404. It's also an interface, so I could do it there too, but I just go straight to source. So when I'm doing this, I run two cables out into a Scarlett 2i2 interface and connect that to my iPhone. And that's how I do my live streams where you get to hear audio exactly as I hear it through my cans. All right, so this is a piece that I wrote for my wife and I. Uh, we just celebrated 11 years of marriage. So I'll let you hear it and then I'll talk about the things that I did. Okay. Okay, sweet, simple track, one minute long. I did this because I made a short, you can actually see it, I posted it on YouTube and TikTok and wherever I am, I posted it there, but I made a video of all of our photos over 11 years of marriage, which is insane. We got married when we were 19, I'm only 30. Um, so shout out to the love of my life. I used the Tone Master Pro exclusively for doing all of this, for all the audio routing. This is just my workflow. It's how I've been able to move fast, you know, and, and really get my ideas out. So we'll look at, um, let's look at just my 335. So if I remember correctly, this is my Juicy Cleans preset on track one, and you can see the, the audio inputs are still the same. So track one is you're recording the Tone Master Pro exactly as it is. Track three is the dry guitar signal. So what I did on this track is, oh, I used the Tone King, what? Yeah, this is my my other uh, neural DSP plugin. Okay, cool. Well, surprise myself. When I get in these workflows, I just I just stay in them. You know, that's being put on my dry chain, and then on the quote unquote, I don't want to say wet signal, but I guess this is the sound that came out of the Tone Master Pro. That's the that sounds. The Juicy Gleans should have some reverb, so I'm not actually sure which preset that is now, but it's one of my presets. You can download them. You can download them all. Because I use the Tone Master Pro and, you know, I'm recording with headphones. I'm, I'm not, I do all of the neural DSP stuff post editing. So after I record it, then I'll go in and tweak. Because most of the time what I'll do is I'll record this in and I just have it muted so I don't hear it. But if we listen to the neural DSP plugin, that's mostly what you hear, right? But when I combine the two, you get a very rich sound, you know, and I, and I do that with all of them. Um, the other thing that I did with the Tone Master Pro is I routed my synthesizer through it. Now, at the time, I didn't have this complicated of a setup. This is a new piece of gear. That I just had my, my new gear day a couple days ago with the SP404. Uh, but with the synthesizer, what I did was is I just ran a cable from its uh, headphone output into the guitar input 
And I think the only thing I did was that I used like the Tube Studio preamp that's built into the Tone Master Pro. Um, and here's the synthesizer tone. And again, you can see I recorded um, one and two in stereo, but it's not really, a, it's a mono track. It's just how I did it at the time. And all, all I did was just follow it through. But you know, the, the Korg, whenever you're in like analog world, most analog devices cannot record directly via USB. But nonetheless, you, you get the whole idea of how flexible this thing really is. Uh, same thing for the pads, um, everything else. And then whenever I go into my mixing and mastering phase, because everything is wired directly into the Tone Master Pro and there's no coloring that is happening on the headphone jack, you can mix and master with your Tone Master Pro. So when I when I wake up, I make a cup of coffee, I get up at like eight o'clock, have a cup of coffee, play with my dogs, I come into the stu studio. First thing I do is I turn on my Tone Master Pro, throw on my headphones and go from there. Um, another thing you need to know, I reached out to Jason Stillwell, who's the product owner for the Tone Master Pro. I was asking him about high impedance headphones because I know a lot of um, a lot of producers. I don't have a pair yet. I've got my eye on the 990s, which is an open back headphone, but they're high impedance. The Tone Master Pro does support high impedance uh, headphones. So if if you're a producer and you're thinking about getting this piece of gear and you want to use a workflow similar to mine, it will support your your high impedance headphones. These are the the 770s. If you're in the market for a pair of headphones, you're going to need multiple pairs of headphones, not just one pair. But I picked these up recently uh, as an upgrade over the Sennheiser HC280s, and I really enjoy them. They're really good for, for everything, um, but I, I love mixing on these. And I mix through the Tone Master Pro because it doesn't color it, you know. And at the end of the day, I'm going to check my mix on like four or five different systems, which is a whole other video if you're interested. Um, you can see some of my, my side chaining that I do. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it at least gave you a couple of ideas of different ways of using the Tone Master Pro outside of just guitar amps. It really is a great piece of gear. You know, for me personally, I, I got myself into trouble last year financially by just buying so much gear and just throw it on the credit card until finally it caught up to me. So now that I've paid off my credit card, thank God I'm debt free. For me, when I buy a piece of gear, it has to do multiple things. And it has to be a good bang for your buck. And I just strongly believe that this thing is a great bang for your buck if you're only a guitar player it's going to save you a ton of money if you look at you know getting into high-end amplifiers you know if you're playing through a boss katana and you think it sounds great then stay with that but if you're ready for a versatile rig that can do anything high-end professional and it's a great studio toy you just can't beat the tone master pro especially for the i the io on it i mean like i own an axe fx3 as well and I, I will probably never get rid of it because it's a great studio amp but it's just not nearly as versatile in in the sake of like form factor of and all the different ways that i, I use it because i can also push bluetooth through this which is crazy i've done it before live i've taken out you know wrote my own tracks muted my guitar parts and bounced out the stem and played to a backing track as a one-man band. And I did that with my iPhone through the Tone Master Pro via Bluetooth. You know, so the, the, it's really, there's just really so many different ways to use this piece of gear. I mean, literally, it's powering this microphone. And this microphone needs phantom power. And it it can do it. You know, it's it, it can do it all. It can You just got to be creative with, with how you do it. If you're interested in supporting me and what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon. Uh, you can get, you can support me for as little as five dollars a month. Any likes, comments, subscribes, whatever you want to do here on YouTube, that also helps me out a ton. And uh, I just want to say thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. If you saw something that I showed and kind of went a little fast, leave me a comment below if you'd like to see me do a deep dive. Also, consider checking out some of my original music. I post it all on YouTube, and I'm getting ready to completely launch my music everywhere because I haven't put out music in about two years. So I do have music out right now, but for me, it's kind of cringe because, you know, that was me two years ago. But <laughs> all right, I will see you guys in the next video. Catch me on a live stream, and I'll see you next time. Peace.